I mean, look, this isn't a bad movie by any means. It does have Scarlett Johansson in it, so like, there's at least one reason to watch it. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's Adaptation Saturday. Happy Saturday. If you're new around here on Saturdays, we take a look at adaptations. It just so happens that for the next couple of months, we're just going to be covering all the MCU films to get caught up before Avengers Endgame. The MCU, as you may know, is made up of three distinct phases. Phase 1 introduces all of the Avengers and their initial team up. Phase 2 develops the world and its characters while also introducing new characters and setting up the scene for Phase 3, which would eventually lead up to even more characters and the inevitable big bad Thanos. For Phase 1, we've already covered Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk, but now it's time to talk about the black sheep in the family, and that is Iron Man 2. Did we pick up now where we left off? Mr. Stark, please. Yes, dear. Can I have your attention? Absolutely. The weirdest thing about Iron Man 2 is that it happens in Phase 1. Every other film in this group is an introduction of a new character. There's Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, and Captain America, with the final film being their team-up movie, The Avengers. Also, why did it happen in 2010, two years after the last two MCU films? Why is 2009 the only year that doesn't have an MCU film? Well, I think all of this can be answered by the simple fact that I'm pretty sure that Marvel wasn't quite sure what they were doing here yet. I mean, Iron Man was really freaking good. The Incredible Hulk wasn't. So when it came to the next film, they could either do Thor, which had been in development hell for years, but we'll talk about that next week, or they could do Iron Man 2, which was sure to do well, considering here was a big hit, the first Iron Man, this, this answer was pretty obvious. Do Iron Man 2. And so we got this film, which is for all intents and purposes, more of a pre-Avengers film than it is an Iron Man sequel. And yet, it does a fairly well job of doing both of these, but there are its issues. Iron Man 2 follows Tony Stark once again, who is now a mainstream celebrity after announcing to the world that he is Iron Man. This publicity causes the government to worry that there's a chance that other people could be building the very same technology, and so they think that Iron Man should belong to the government. Tony obviously disagrees, and yet the government was kinda right because there's this guy named Ivan who's the son of a man who used to work with Tony's father, and Ivan has now figured out how to build the exact same technology that keeps the Iron Man suit running. Thus, Ivan becomes Whiplash, a pretty dope villain. Oh, wait a second. Iron Man 2 is actually about Justin Hammer, rival to Stark Industries, who's decided to create his own Iron Man suit. With the help of Whiplash, he creates a bunch of drones, takes over Rhodey as the war machine, and then ends up being the main villain. No, no, wait a second. Iron Man 2 is actually about Natalie Rushman, who joins Stark Industries as an assistant to Tony, only to then be revealed by Nick Fury of S.H.I.E.L.D. that she's basically a secret agent named Natasha Romanoff, or Black Widow, and Oh, no, 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 Iron Man 2 is about Rhodey, Tony's friend that works in the Air Force, who is no longer played by this guy, but is now played by this guy, takes another one of Tony's Iron Man suits, and he ends up selling it to Justin Hammer, only for it to backfire because of Ivan, but at the end of the movie, it's all good because Rhodey becomes Tony's sidekick war machine. No, 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 Iron Man 2 is actually about Tony getting sick, and after being a douchebag and getting in trouble by Samuel L. Jackson, it allows him to rediscover an element that will cure his sickness. No, Iron Man 2 is all of those. My, my point is, when describing Iron Man 2, you sound like a madman because there's 95,000 different things that end up happening at the same time. This is a movie about Tony Stark's character growth, from being a conceited asshole to realizing that he shouldn't let things go to his head. Almost like the exact same character arc in Iron Man 1, but we'll get to that later. Iron Man 2 is also a movie about setting up the Avengers. Nick Fury is here, Black Widow is here, Captain America, S.H.I.E.L.D. is here, War Machine is here, Phil Coulson is here. It's very much an expanding of the Marvel Universe, more so than any other movie in Phase 1. But what this results in is an extremely big mess of a movie. And it's got me conflicted, because on one hand, it's an entertaining movie. There's a couple of really great action sequences. There's plenty of comedic moments that I laughed at. I love the character interactions between the main cast. It's a fun, entertaining superhero movie. 
But then it's also got some really dumb, irritating, objectively bad ideas. Let's talk about the villains. Ivan, Whiplash, like I said, I really like this character. This is a man who wants to avenge his father. He's just as brilliant as Tony Stark is, and he uses that to his advantage by becoming Whiplash. The fight scene between him and Iron Man is great, but then Whiplash gets arrested by the cops, and we find out, oh man, Whiplash isn't the main villain anymore. Justin Hammer is. Justin Hammer is an awful character. I like Sam Rockwell in some movies as an actor, but he did not do a good job in this movie. Not only do I not like his acting, but I don't like the character of Hammer either. It's like he's some egotistical asshole like, like Tony, except without all the charismatic qualities that he has. Like Obadiah stayed in the first movie. And I'm sure that that's the angle they were going for. They, they succeeded in creating that angle, but I don't think it works because what ends up happening is that Hammer enlists the help of Ivan to basically prove that he's got a bigger dick than Tony and ends up backfiring on him because you know how I just said Whiplash is the main villain of the movie? Justin Hammer is? Well, well, guess what? Get on your big boy britches because I was wrong both times because Whiplash is the main villain. Like, he's, like I said, he's like, oh, but I stay in the first movie. You know what I like more than a good written villain with real tragic backstories? Good written villains that have all of their unique qualities stripped away from them because they're just a guy in a iron suit. And that's where my entire respect for Iron Man 2 kind of goes downhill. I, I like the stuff with Tony Stark and his character development, even if it is sort of a rehash of Iron Man 1's character arc. I like the relationship stuff. I haven't mentioned this yet, but I like the relationship between Tony and Pepper. It plays out well. Once again, Pepper Potts is still a really well-written character. I like the Rhodey and Tony interactions. Here's Rhodey, a friend that's concerned for the well-being of Tony Stark, who implements some tough love, only for him to end up being the war machine. I love the pre-Avengers <laughs> Natasha is a great character in this movie even if her character does just end up not weighing much to the future of MCU films. It's a great introduction to Black Widow nonetheless. We also have some great stuff from Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury, even Happy, Tony's bodyguard, who's still played by the director of the film. There's all this great stuff that just ends up being weighed down by the actual plot of the movie. That plot being angsty man is upset that more successful man is more successful than him, so he builds a bigger robot than him but still loses. It's just dumb. And it's the same reason that I didn't like the third act of the first Iron Man film. And it's for this very reason that it was kind of hard to rewatch Iron Man 2. I've seen this one a few times now. And honestly, I don't care to rewatch it again anytime in the future. As a standalone film, there's no reason for me to just pick it up off my shelf and be like, I want to watch Iron Man 2. As a sequel to Iron Man 1, it kind of works but but only just barely as a part of the mcu it's got the avengers build up which could arguably make it worth re-watching if you're watching the entirety of the mcu but even then most people can just agree that you can skip this one for the most part if anything i'd say if you haven't seen iron man 2 but you want to experience the mcu in its entirety then definitely watch it for the great character interactions but if you're re-watching everything for endgame you could easily skip this one I know that I will in the future. But that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If for whatever reason you didn't like, you can hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts on Iron Man 2 is. We're going to be covering Thor next week. Get hyped for that. Go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.